This next opening is called the Evans Gambit, and it's a variation of the Gioco Piano, which we just looked at. And it starts out the same as the Gioco Piano, or the Italian game. The pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight to f3 attacking the pawn, knight to c6 defending the pawn, bishop to c4, bishop to c5. And this was the the setup for the Gioco Piano. And if you recall, see this pawn is undefended. So the Evans Gambit tries to give up a pawn, which a, what a gambit is. So it sacrifices a pawn. And it does it like this. B, pawn to b4, attacking the bishop. So the bishop captures the pawn. And now he throws in pawn to c3, attacking the bishop. So it, when the bishop runs back to c5, he actually gains a tempo by pushing to d4. So if this knight comes out, Lee castles, and then this not, when this knight attacks this pawn, and in the in the Gioco Piano um, a game that we looked at, white played pawn to d3, defending the pawn, but now he's got this extra move. You know, it's um, the rock, paper, scissors, you know, little guy harassing big guy here. So he throws that in, because he can ignore this, because this is more important. This is worth three points. That's only worth one. Attacks the bishop, recaptures, and now the bishop runs. And now white has this nice pawn center, although he's down a pawn. So it's always risky when you give up material. You really have to uh, justify that and continue to attack. Otherwise, if black consolidates, he'll end up with a one end game. So he attacks the knight right away. And black throws in a tit for dat, tit for tat. Oh, tit for tat, tit for tat, tit for tat. Mm -hmm. And black throws in a tit for tat. He says, you take my knight, I'll take your bishop. So he does take the knight and opens up this file for the check against the king. Try and keep the king from castling, which is always one of your goals, if you can, in the opening. So he takes the bishop. And pawn takes attacking the rook. The rook runs, and now white throws in a check. And black blocks with the knight. The bishop double attacks, or th throws in an extra man, two against one now. The queen's defending. And the bishop blocks the rook. The knight swings in, so he's getting all of his men in quickly to participate in the attack. The bishop pins the knight against the rook, and also the knight is undefended. The knight runs. He's willing to give up the rook to get that knight in because he's got a little check here. And the rook captures, otherwise he would have been captured with this check. Throws in the check anyway. The king runs. The rook slides up, attacking the bishop and defending this bishop again. The pawn moves, and we have a discovered defense here. The queen now is defending this bishop. And now the bishop pins the rook against the king, so he's at least going to be able to get the exchange. Three points versus five points here. It's always usually a very good thing. The knight slides back, attacking the bishop. And the rook captures this bishop. Pawn takes. And now the knight swings in, setting up a, a little trick here. So the rook is pinned, so the rook can't move. And now if the queen takes this uh, knight, which is undefended, so it's a little lure here, then the knight could capture this pawn with check. And since the rook is pinned, he wouldn't be able to capture the knight and the knight would capture the queen. So the king runs and now the bishop takes the rook and defends the knight. The knight captures the bishop. Now the queen slides up defending this knight. 
So you see White has the momentum, he has the initiative on the attack. It's one step ahead. Queen captures the pawn attacking this undefended rook. The rook attacks the queen, which is defended by this queen. And the bishop blocks. Now, white throws in a check. Always look for the check. I can set up combinations because you notice here through this, you always look for the coordination of pieces on a square, as I mentioned earlier. So this knight and queen are bearing down on this square. So he throws in the check to get the queen into the ac action here. The knight checks. The rook captures. But now the queen is, and the rook is undefended, which is a key point. The queen slides up with check, also a key point. It keeps you on the offensive. The king runs. And now the the knight slides in attacking the queen and attacking the bishop and there's two against one here and the queen is also attacking this rook so here black resigns because he's going to give up too much material also notice how many pawns black has um, how many pawns white sacrificed in order to keep the attack up one two three four five six pawns against four pawns but white white's attack was so accurate that he was able to give up this material and still get a winning advantage. So this is an example where everything worked out very well for, for White. He was able to go on the attack, keep it up until he was able to achieve an overwhelming and winning advantage. As I mentioned before, the opening is a fight for time, space, force, and a superior pawn structure. In the hopes of gaining an advantage in one of these, and then using it to often convert it to another advantage or to simply use that advantage to gain a material advantage in the end and win the game. In the last game we looked at an Evans Gambit where white got the upper hand and in this game we'll see how black got the strategic advantage. So the game starts out with e4, e5, knight f3 attacking the pawn, knight c6 defending the pawn, bishop c4 eyeing the f7 pawn, bishop to c5, and now here's the Evans gambit where you're white is sacrificing a pawn, so he's giving up material in the hopes of gaining the center, which is more space. c3, bishop runs, d4, and now white has achieved his great center here with e4 and d4. The knight swings over, attacks the bishop, Bishop runs. D6, opening up this diagonal for the light squared bishop. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. And knight takes. My guess this is where where white went wrong in the game. Um, he tried to regain his material, but he lost a little time in the process. And now notice that white's pawns are bad. As I mentioned before, this is one of the things that white gives up in the Evans Gambit. All these pawns, these two pawns are very weak because they don't have pawns that can defend them. And we'll see how that ends up being the key advantage for, for uh, black. The knight develops. And now it looks like black has caught up in development. So white really has gained very little. White castles black castles and the fight is on all else being equal black will now try and go after these weak pawns because that's the um, weakness in white's camp so let's see let's play a few more moves and see how this pans out queen gets out of the way here get the rook over and this is just now going to be a cat and mouse um, maneuvering and the hopes of outplaying your opponent based on the strategic uh, profile of the position. Knight takes, queen takes, bishop develops, also attacking, eyeing this pawn. Two attackers against one defender here with the bishop. Bishop gets out of the way. Pawn develops to allow the light squared bishop come out on this side if he wants. 
rook attacks queen, queen runs, take, take. These are just all self-explanatory. Um, now the bishop is creating a bit of a threat here. When the pawn moves, it'll be skewering the queen and rook. So black develops the bishop here. If he tries this ploy, the bishop will be able to block the attack. Knight swings in. Bishop develops, gets out of the way for the rook. Now he throws this push in, attacking the queen. He does interpose the bishop. Rook slides over, putting two attackers on the bishop. Black needs to be careful because the pressure is building here. Now we've reached a very tactical part of the game, and that's where players can really mess up. Rook slides over, developing, and also putting two defenders on this bishop. The tension is, they're maintaining the tension because you first want to get all of your pieces active, either offensively or defensively, and also it increases the likelihood of error as the position gets more and more complex. The knight swings in closer to enemy territory and now black creates some luft, some air for his king to avoid a back rank mate and it also prevents the knight or bishop from swinging into g5. The rook takes, it looks like he's giving up the exchange but there's a little trick here because if the queen takes bad move because the knight has a check here and it would be a discovered attack on the queen and black would lose his queen so he takes with the rook and this is the whole idea of trying to outplay your opponent you set up little tricks and traps along the way while at the same time adhering to the strategic um, goals of the position the knight slides over creating the discovered attack on the on the rook and queen to get the rook back because he gave up the rook for that little trick but he knew he'd get it back and he does here queen takes and although we have material equality you know six pawns against six pawns black has the better pawn structure here as I mentioned before he actually has three against two over here so one of these pawns could try and push through to become a queen so shall I continue or shall we stop here I know people generally like to see how things play out, so I'm going to quickly go through these moves and I'll explain here and there, but we'll just get to the position where where white resigns. Okay, the pawn pushes to create loot for the white king. Knight slides over, putting two attackers on this pawn. And white handles that by swinging the knight here, attacking the bishop. So if he does do this, he'll get the bishop, he'll get a piece. All right, a little trick. Bishop backs off. Now the queen defends the pawn. And these pawns start to advance. It also keeps this pawn from being a target later. Pawn pushes attacking the queen. The queen runs. It also slows down this pawn push here. Queen slides up, putting pressure on the knight. The pawn advances. He defends the knight, freeing up the queen. And also gaining some space on the king side. And now the pawn advances all the way in the hopes of becoming a queen. So black's going to work on these weak pawns, as I mentioned before. Knight slides over, defending this pawn. Knight slides in, attacking. All right, knight here. I'm not going to explain every move. Let's just play it out. Knight takes the pawn. Little tit for tat. Here he first attacks the, the, the knight. Knight takes. Queen takes. And the pressure was just too much for white. And he did end up losing both pawns. Probably with um, really accurate play, um, he would have been able to maybe hold on to them and the bishop runs because we had two attackers on this um, one on the knight and one on the bishop and this one was attacked twice so he does get he keeps his piece 
but in exchange, Black got all of these these three pawns, which are worth a piece. You know, three points. Um, uh, the minor pieces are worth three points. The game continues, and this was his big mistake, and he resigned here. Actually, uh, he challenged the queen, and and now these this pawn can advance. He will have these three pawns and probably get a queen out of it, but um, who knows? With great play, it could still be a draw, but white resigned here. So you see that um, it doesn't really matter what opening you play. Neither side has a, a definitive ad advantage because there's a lot of play, and the best player will win.